Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Home Run. I'm your host, Jonathan Vasquez. I went through a long introduction of myself last session, so I will not do that today. I will feel free to catch that on the recording. Today, I have two very special guests. They have a lot of experience and a lot of insight in helping people acquire properties and build teams remotely to not just acquire the property, but then also rehab it, rent it, and manage it. Um, Amanda and Michael, I'll give you a couple of minutes to introduce yourself after I get through a couple of more slides. Um, so audience, just please hold. Uh, quick takeaways. Today, you should expect to learn how to find great properties in other states, what that remote investing experience is like in 2022, some common mistakes of remote investing, and how to partner with local teams to acquire, rehab, and rent a property. As always, our legal disclaimer, the content of this presentation or any other from presentations is for informational purposes only and does not constitute mortgage or financial advice. Please consult a licensed mortgage or financial professional with any questions to your specific case. And I'll let you read the whole thing on your own, uh, on your time. Let's roll. Um, Amanda, do you want to take a, a couple minutes and uh, tell the audience who you are, what you do, where you are based out of? Yeah, of course. Um, my name's Amanda. I'm based in Denver, Colorado currently, um, but I am a veteran of the United States Army, so I've lived kind of all over the place. I settled down and graduated uh, from CU Denver with a finance degree. Um, now I have a lot of background in corporate finance and wealth management, but also have personal real estate investing experience doing live-in flips here in Colorado um, and little mountain towns. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. Cool. Michael. Yeah, my name is Michael. I'm a client partner on the team as well. Um, I actually used both DoorVest and Beeline to acquire my first investment home a couple of years ago now. And really just love the process so much that I decided to join the team. And I just like telling people like, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. So uh, I'm excited to share my knowledge with you. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. So I just want to clarify, uh, I guess, one thing. Uh, so Amanda, you use, you basically did a live and flip in your primary home. So you bought a home with, what kind of financing did you use? So I'm a veteran, so I used a VA loan. Um, yeah. Lived in the property for a little over six months. Uh, I have done this process a couple times, but lived in the pro property for a little over six months in a li livable property. Um, hire my own subcontractors and manage them on my own. Um, and then and then sell it after that. I was about to ask you how much of that rehab you did yourself versus how much you contracted out. Um, a lot of rehab we've done, uh, my husband and I have done by ourselves. Uh, I, drew, I grew up with my dad as a general contractor, so I got a lot of exposure growing up. Um, so we did do a lot of DIY, but we didn't uh, want to skimp on some of the things like flooring and uh, like backsplash, kitchen cabinets, stuff like that. Um, so it, it's a good mixture. Okay, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a little different from your story, Michael, uh, because Amanda, you were you weren't just investing locally; you were investing using basically your primary home and scale from there. And I do want to get into the scale of part in a second. But Michael, you bought a property remotely. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. And I was kind of doing my own research. I took an investing course and was really um interested in the idea of using leverage or a loan to buy an investment property but at the time i was kind of you know working a different job outside of DoorVest, and it just took so much time and energy and i really loved what DoorVest brought to the table in terms of making it easy um which we'll go into more on the call i'm sure but um but yeah once i saw DoorVest kind of process and how easy it was, I was sold um, along with the great people that work here. So um, yeah, excited to dive into it more. Cool. Awesome. I'm sorry, would you mind clarifying where you were located versus where the property was located and how far that was? Yeah, definitely. So at the time, um, I lived in San Francisco. I've since moved to Austin. Um, but the property I bought was all the way in Houston. So completely remote um which 
buying in San Francisco would have just been impossible. So um, really loved like the price range in Texas and everything that was going on there. Um, so wanted to invest there and also wanted to move here. So um, excited to be here. Cool. Awesome. So I love that you both have your own very different investment experience. And now you bring that to the table when you work with those investors. And I'm curious, when you work with investors, roughly, and this might vary you know, for you too, but roughly what percentage would you say is out of state or versus like more local investors that you're working with? Yeah, I can take this one. Um, I think that I would say almost 98% of our investors are out of state versus local. Um, it's very rare that I get somebody on the phone that um, is living in Texas and wants to invest in Texas, but not completely, um, not completely, not doable. But uh, yeah, most of them are out of state. Gotcha. And what about you, Michael? Same experience? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the majority is going to be an out of state investor wanting access to maybe more affordable areas, but you do get the occasional local investor who um, might already own a couple of properties and really just wants to have an easier experience with this one and kind of let DoorBest do the heavy lifting for them. Gotcha, that makes sense. And when you think about those investors, like what are some things they have in common? Um, like are they, you know, like from the same geographical area, like what are some trends that you're seeing in those people? I would say a lot of these investors are located in areas where real estate investing is not quite possible. The barriers to entry are a lot higher. So uh, the purchase prices are just undoable. Um, and, and what about you, Michael? What are you seeing? Yeah, definitely. So similar to my first buying experience, you get a lot of people um, in the coastal areas, California, New York. Um, but really, uh, since DoorBest has grown, we've seen everywhere in between now. Um, so people from every state are just really attracted to the process. But um, I think you hit on the right on the head, Amanda. It's just like, where can I invest affordably? And DoorBest is really selecting those areas for people. Cool. Um, a bit of topic. Michael, are you originally from Texas? I'm not. I... Um, I'm from the suburbs of New York originally, but I've kind of floated around at this point a, a good amount. So um, it's tough to say exactly where I'm from at this point. Uh, well, you've, I see the hat, so it looks like you've adopted, you know, Texas at this point. Yeah, exactly. I'm a happy Texan, and uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, yeah. um, I guess just gonna uh, talk a little, a little bit more about the profile. Um, of these investors. Um, obviously, the out of state, they're in areas that are a little more expensive. What, uh, how many of them, or I guess I like to talk in percentages, what's the breakdown of like first time or what I like to call junior investors versus people that are a little more seasoned uh, to have, you know, four, four plus properties? Um, yeah, I think the majority of our buyers are first time buyers. Um, not just of investments, but of properties as a whole. Um, I think what DoorBest is really bringing to the table is kind of a change in the American dream where it used to be owning your primary residence um, was part of the American dream. But now with DoorBest, really just owning property in general is the American dream. So um, I'd say the majority of our customers fit that mold. But again, yeah, some of them are experienced investors who really just want an easier time this go around. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's it's a really good mixture. I think that um, we had a lot more newer investors when interest rates were maybe a, a bit lower. Um, and since then, it's maybe tapered off a little bit. But I still I still think it's a it's a good mix of experienced and new home buyers. Cool, that makes sense. And before I continue, I completely forgot to mention uh, two things. One, yes, we are recording this session. Um, I see the questions coming in. And if you have any questions, there is a Q&A tab on the right side of the screen, so you can submit the questions and we'll start to get to them as we go along. Um, there's also a little orange sticky. If you have questions about a specific, um, like a specific, uh, a scenario or deal you're working on, you can click on that and it will take you to a questions link to go to uh, a loan guide for Beeline. 
forgot to mention that in the beginning. Um, let me get back to this. Okay, so let's talk about the areas where people are investing. So I know Dorvest has uh, just expanded to a couple of new markets. So can you tell me a little bit about those markets and why you chose those markets? And you know, what, what are you seeing there? Sorry, that's a loaded question. We can break that up. <laughs> can you get started, Michael? Sure. Um, so Dorvest started in Texas, mainly in Houston. And once we were able to be successful there, we've just expanded. Um, I don't think, even though Texas is a really great market, um, not everyone wants to invest in the same area. Uh, we want to offer different kind of things for different types of investors. And so more recently, we've added homes in um, Georgia, Oklahoma, and Ohio. And so um, if you want to lean more toward a lower cost home that might be able to cash flow a little bit more, we have markets for that. Um, if you're looking for maybe a, a slightly higher cost home, but that has more appreciation uh, potential, we have that for you as well. Um, and I think just expanding in geography helps us reach those different kind of niches customers are looking for. Do you yeah, feel I think, sorry, go ahead, Amanda. <laughs> I think you covered it all very, very well. I think that a lot of people, um, they usually think of Texas when you think of single family rentals, just because it's been such a key player in the industry. Uh, but we're seeing more and more of these, these cities pop up that are becoming key players, such as Atlanta and a lot of corporations moving to Atlanta. Um, so there's a lot of families moving to the outskirts of the city here. And then we're just seeing a lot of families also move into these Midwestern cities like Columbus, Oklahoma. Um, so I think we're providing our investors a, a really diverse set of homes and areas to choose from. Cool, that's fair. I guess the follow up to that is, uh, you know, as you're expanding to different areas and different types of, or I guess different demographics in those properties, right? They're very different cities. Um, are you seeing the makeup of your investors changed or is it still kind of the same like, in terms of um, where they're located and the kind of returns they're looking for? I think it's I think it's genuinely stayed uh, pretty, pretty the same throughout throughout our expansions in our cities. Um, but Michael, what do you think? Have, do you think that our investors have changed at all? I don't think so, but I think it's just peaked even more excitement. Um, people like options at the end of the day. So um, we can say that now we're in a couple of states instead of just one. I think it just piques a lot more interest. So I want to say the demographic has changed, but I think um, the amount of excitement for us has just grown exponentially. Cool. That's awesome. Um, I want to ask a little bit about uh, the concerns that people have investing remotely. Um, I always said, you know, invested remotely might be a little tough. I thought about it. I looked into it. And ironically, I ended up buying um, a permanent residence without even looking at it. I bought it remotely. So just curious what kind of concerns people bring up and what are some ways that you're able to address those concerns? And I would love to hear about your concerns as well, Michael, when you were looking. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think number one is just due diligence on things like how good of a shape is the house in? Has it been inspected? And things like that um, are probably top of mind when it comes to investing remotely. Um, but that's where Dorbest comes in. We do the renovations for customers, which are um, guaranteed, as well as held to a standard, which is available on our website. Um, so just knowing that Dorbest has that vested interest for the long term in the customer success is what really sold me as a customer before I started working here. Um, just because again, I was investing out of state. I didn't really have time to fly out and visit at home. Um, wanted to know that I wasn't just buying a property with a ton of problems in it, but Dorvest putting in all those renovations up front really gave me that extra peace of mind and um, really sold me on the process. I think a few other problems that we see as well, um, like Michael said, people love options. And we do have some new home buyers that are looking at these properties and they do want to have, you know, options when it comes to um, 
what countertops or what what cabinets we choose for renovations or the renovations that we complete in general. And I think that um, DoorBest, like Michael said, has a renovation standard and there isn't a ton of options. And it's a very hands-off and passive approach to investing, um, whereas remote buyers sometimes want a more hands-on um, approach here. But our ideal investor doesn't have the time to to pick out cabinet colors and, and countertops and stuff. So I think that that's one thing that we run into. That makes sense. I guess that kind of leads me into like, what are some mistakes that people make? And I realize you have a lot of processes and things in place to help people not make those mistakes. Uh, but maybe what are some of the things that people do before they get to you that you, they're like, yeah, we can, we can fix that for you. That won't happen again. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I touched on it somewhat, but I think, again, it's really just doing the due diligence, um, not just on the renovation side, but also from a number side. And one of the things that DoorBest does to make customers' lives easier is we'll underwrite the homes from an end customer's experience. So our team will uh, run spreadsheet analysis on homes, making sure that there's positive cash flow and probable appreciation for years to come. Um, and we might review 100 homes and only maybe buy five of them. So I think that's a very underrated part about what DoorVest brings to the table is that um, underwriting a home or evaluating it from a financial standpoint takes a lot of time. Um, but we've kind of weeded it out for customers, making it easy for them. Um, so again, on the renovation side, we've done that, but also from a number side, we've done that for customers. And I think a lot of investors, before they come to us, they may try a hands-on approach where they're trying to find these properties remotely themselves. And it's hard to find these neighborhoods from a remote setting. So they can get into sort of this analysis paralysis of trying to figure out how the deal works for them, um, what their priority is, what their buy box is as an investor. Uh, whereas DoorBest can step in and we do the research research for you up front. Um, we look into the neighborhoods, want to make sure that we're looking at trends. We look into the renovations, making sure we put in the renovations that are going to add value to your house um, that are needed rather than just a want. Uh, so we take away a lot of that analysis paralysis. Cool. That makes a lot of sense. Um, we had a, Actually, we are having questions come in. Uh, let me start to get to some of them. Um, one of the questions is, uh, can this work for people that don't live in the U.S.? And I, and I think if I were to layer something else on top of that is, how can we, how does this work for people that don't live in the U.S.? Gotcha. I think um, you still can buy, but generally it's easier. Sorry, Jonathan, but it's generally easier if you're located outside the United States and you can pay cash. Um, but you know, there are certain financial um, eligibility type things. I think you could probably touch on better on the loan side because um, DoorVest doesn't do the lending in-house. And that's why we partnered with customer or companies like Beeline to uh, take care of that for customers. So I wouldn't say it's entirely not possible. Um, there might be some hoops to jump through on the way there. Um, but I, I think that, yeah, it's more of the lending aspect and being able to pay all cash for the property, um, unless you would like to get maybe a, a, a bit of a higher interest rate. Cool. That makes sense. Um, again, I am not a licensed mortgage professional, but I can say that, yes, we can get finance for people that don't live in the U.S. Also for people, I guess there, there are two categories, people that don't live in the U.S. but are from the U.S., and then people that are not from the U.S. that are not in the U.S. And we can do both. Um, but, I mean, like you said, cash is king. It makes it a lot easier when you're outside of the country or if you're from a different country. Uh, but in those cases, we can also do, uh, I forgot what it's called. Uh, Tori is the expert in these things. But uh, there's a way to do a financing after you buy cash. So you can do that as well. Um, cool. We'll keep taking questions here uh, from Sandra. Uh, what are some up and coming locations across the US that will be interesting to look into, like good investment locations? So um, I think maybe we can narrow that down maybe to the markets that you're in. Um, it's, and I just spent, Dorvis spends a lot of time analyzing the whole country looking for opportunities. So, 
Yeah, I think that some some good opportunities right now are in the Midwest. Um, Texas, Texas is a great opportunity um, as well. And then, and then, like I previously mentioned, Atlanta is also um, awesome opportunity because there's so many companies moving their headquarters there. Um, lots of families moving to Atlanta, and that's the population is just growing uh, very quickly in Atlanta as well. Um. One other tidbit is Atlanta and the greater Georgia area actually has lower property taxes than um, Texas. So that's one thing that's really intrigued a lot of our investors about buying in Atlanta. And then also um, Dorvest doesn't plan to stop here. So, I mean, I'm sure in the upcoming months, you'll see more and more markets as we continue to grow. Cool, excellent. Um, and that's a good point about taxes. A lot of times people look at the property cost, right? It's the purchase price. So they're not looking at the taxes, insurance. Insurance is a big one, uh, at least here in Florida it is. So that's a good point there. There's a lot more than just the, the purchase price. Um, I want to talk a little bit about COVID and um, remote investing uh, and how the pandemic and the shift to remote work has affected how people are buying, especially in Texas. Um, I have a lot of friends in Texas, and every time I go there, they have more and more neighbors that came from California. So, you know, it, it always gets me thinking about how this changing the just everything uh, in Texas. But what are some things that you have seen change as a result of the pandemic, I guess, during and now, you know, in the post-pandemic world, so to speak? Or I guess, I guess the, high, the initial um, turn of the pandemic. Yeah, I think prior to the pandemic, right, a lot of people still did invest um, remotely, but maybe not as prevalently. And I think actually um, the pandemic made it more acceptable or people were more understanding about using Zoom and using like remote viewing of housing and things like that. So it's actually worked in our favor. I think more people understand like we just live in a different world than we once did. Um, and, you know, I think it's a great time to invest remotely because people are way more acceptable even than they once were. Yeah, I agree. We have the technologies in place, um, the processes in place to make people feel more comfortable about not physically visiting the property. Um, and remotely investing in the property. Uh, I think COVID really kind of got everybody used to that. And um, it, a lot of services have become a lot more useful since COVID. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, now that you mentioned services, that kind of brings me to e-closings, uh, which I think is something that is super cool. Um, are you, what percentage of your transactions would you say are you seeing uh, e-closing? Like Ron? Um, I mean, basically all of them are either E or remote. So that's definitely a common question our customers ask is, well, if I'm buying out of state, like how will the closing work? Do I have to at least find that one time? And the answer is no. Um, everything can be done either digitally or we'll send someone remotely. So there's never been an easier time. Um, and I, I actually don't think we've had one customer close in person. So all online pro process, really easy. That's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah, something um, that I'm excited for in the industry to see more of that um, and really do more video versus like the current hybrid way of sending someone out to somebody's house, but really just do it on video and do everything electronically. It'll save a lot of time, a lot of paperwork and a lot of money for people. So super excited for that. Um, just a quick reminder that there is a Q&A panel on the right. Uh, so if anyone has questions, this will be a good time to put them in there. I think we've addressed all the ones that came in, uh, whether in the chat or uh, by voice. Um, but let me ask you, um, I'll wait for questions. What are some things that you're excited about in real estate in the upcoming, say, 12 to 24 months, whether that's Dorvis specifically or just the, market, the industry in general? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm really excited for this kind of shift of shift of market conditions. I think that it's been uh, pretty bizarre the past couple years with record low interest rates. And um, I guess some people could call it a perfect market. But now that you're looking at the market these days, I think you're able to 
get properties at a value. You're not, you know, getting outbidded by um, 20 cash buyers that are waiving appraisals and inspections. I think the market has just changed drastically over the next, over the last two years. And I think it'll start to soften and, and become more of a conservative real estate investing approach in the next two years, rather than um, something that's a little bit intimidating as far as our prices overvalued or our homes overvalued or, or are they at the right value? I think right now we're seeing homes at a great value and interest rates are somewhat neutral. Um, so, so we're avoiding those bidding wars and um, the, the worry that the home is overvalued. Cool, that makes sense. I mean, that's definitely something that I hear from a lot of people, especially like my friends when I talk to them. That's all they talk about. Like, you're going to pay this much and what will happen if the market corrects or if you can't charge the rents you need to charge to meet the to get the kind of cap rate that you're going for. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of fear and speculation in the market right now. But if you look at, you know, historical figures of 2008 or 1999, the, the recessions that we've seen then 2008, you know, was kind of an anomaly, whereas this is a housing market crash. But the previous crashes were uh, didn't have much of an effect on real estate, right? And even in 2008, real estate went down 13% and was back up within the next three years, it rebounded. Um, so I think people are starting to realize that there's not a huge correlation between the stock market and the real estate market. And they're starting to kind of come to terms with the fact that real estate is an extremely conservative investment. Um, so we're seeing a lot, a lot more traction uh, and less fear. Cool, love that. Michael, yeah. whatever you were, some things you're excited about. Yeah, just to piggyback off Amanda's points, right? If you zoom out and you look at the graph of real estate prices over time, um, there might be some small blips here and there, but the chart goes up and to the right. In other words, prices continue to go up over time. So when you buy a real estate investment, I think it's a little different than maybe you know your Robinhood account where you might be trading to try and make some gains in the short term. Um, when you invest in real estate, you're really investing in the long term. And so you would like to see that prices continue to go up, but also don't forget about the other benefits, which are equity, right? Someone's going to be paying down the mortgage for you. So ultimately when you sell the home, it's not just about the price, but how much is the loan paid down? And if that's not coming out of your pocket and it's coming out of a tenant's pocket, even better. Um, and also the tax benefits. Um, I'm not a CPA by any means, but I did uh, utilize one and Dorvesta started partnering with some CPAs as well. Um, so once you get your first investment property, hopefully with us, but even if you don't go with us, you know, see a CPA, um, basically every expense is deductible. So um, even if some of the things like you mentioned, Jonathan, taxes, insurance, um, things like that eat into cash flow somewhat on a monthly basis. Come tax season, you're really going to be saving because you'll be able to deduct all those things. Um, whereas if you compare that to your primary residence, you can't make those same deductions. So um, I, in sum, I like to call it the big three, right? Appreciation, cash flow, um, and then your tax and equity benefits. Oh, awesome. That's a good point. We actually have a, a session on real estate taxes, uh, I think four weeks from now. Uh, so we're going to cover that then. That's that's a big one. Most people don't really talk about how to get the uh, all the tax deductions that come with real estate. Um, I do want to ask you a question about, um, I guess, a few questions about property management. But before we get to that, let me get to some of these questions that are coming in. Um, let's see. Okay. So going back to investing and like people actually going to the property, um, Michael, you mentioned that you don't recall anyone actually visiting or going to Texas or whatever the property is to, um, for the closing, but do you have any clients that have actually gone out to visit the properties? Um, it's not typical, maybe once or twice, I think, um, mainly people are drawn to the fact that it's convenient the fact that it's an all online process and that we do kind of the heavy lifting for you um so i'd say you know it's definitely doable if you want but it's not highly encouraged just because 
our subset, I think, really just likes the ease of process. Um, what do you think, Amanda? Yeah, I think I, I agree completely. I think that our ideal investor doesn't have it, the time to go out to the property. Um, so there's not really a lot of people visiting the property. Um, you know, it, yeah, I think, Michael, you, you said it all. Fair. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what happens after the closing, right? So now I've bought the property. I haven't even been there. Um, and then how do you help uh, those investors then find the right tenant, get the tenant in place, and then just the ongoing management of the property? Absolutely. So this is another thing that I love to highlight about DoorVest is, again, you'll have full equity ownership in the home but we still have a vested interest in your success, um, but as your property manager. And so all the things like any maintenance requests, speaking to your tenant, collecting rent will all be done by our property management team, really making your life easy. Um, and then our software engineering team has created an online customer portal where you can track your rent collections and things like that on a monthly basis. Um, so between our excellent customer service from property management and our tech driven um, side being a San Francisco based startup, I think it's a really win win for customers uh, once they're onboarded to uh, the home ownership side. Yep, it's extremely passive and hands off. Once you close on the property, I would say, you know, you're keeping an eye on on your account to see it, what, if anything comes up. But other than that, uh, DoorVest will notify you if anything comes up. And other than that, you're kind of just uh, reaping the benefits from investing remotely. Cool. So I mean, literally just own the property, collect the checks, then hopefully no headaches. Sounds like very few, if any, <laughs> which is Pretty awesome. Much, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think anyone that has ever. Have you owned and managed your own properties at some point? I know, Michael, you went directly to DoorVest. What about you, Amanda? Do you ever own rental property? No, so I've never done any rental properties. Um, I'm currently looking for my first door vest home, so that that'll be fun to to invest in. Um, just because I have done those live and fl live and flips, and um, it's it's hard. It's a lot of time, and especially with having a full time job, it's just it's not manageable at this point to be managing subcontractors and and figuring it all out on my own when I've been introduced to a platform that that takes care of all of it for you. So. Hopefully in the future, I'll have some experience um, owning a home through DoorVest. Cool, awesome. Um, I guess just out of curiosity, question for the two of you, um, is your plan to then just continue to build out a portfolio of properties or have you thought about what your next steps or have you, do you have a different vision for your next steps in uh, real estate? Yeah, I think, I think for me personally, my husband and I would like to build out um, a portfolio of properties, but I think it'll be um, a different approach given I am a veteran and I have access to these VA loans. I think that um, when he gets a little bit more time, we'll be able to continue with live and flips and also kind of mix in door best homes uh, with that as well. Um, and we haven't made a solidified plan yet, but that's the direction we're going. Cool. Awesome. What about you, Michael? Yeah, I think same type of deal. I really love the benefits that real estate provides and has given me um, thus far. And I want to continue to build on that, but also a diversified portfolio. So for me, it's not real estate versus everything. Um, it's real estate plus everything for me. So um, just really continue to build a diversified portfolio, which will 100% um, include more homes at some point. Oh, awesome. I do want to tie in one of the audience questions into this piece, which is uh, what would you recommend people do to prepare before investing remotely? It's a great question. I would say just to, just to complete your due diligence, look at look at the markets, the options of markets that you have and um, think about uh, where would you like to live? And then figure out what your what your buy box is. So what are you focused on? Are you focused on appreciation? Or are you more focused on trying to maximize your cash flow? Uh, what's your purchase price, like upper and lower amounts? Um, what what is your criteria for a home? So what year built are you looking for? Or um, uh, what how much are you willing to put down? Just defining that buy box 
and then being able to look for a deal after defining what exactly you want will make it a lot easier for you to stay organized in your search. Cool, makes sense. Yeah, the only thing I'd add to that is also just make sure your financials are in order. Obviously, it's going to be a big um, investment. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Jonathan, but you're going to need a minimum of 20% of the purchase price um, to go with you guys. I forget if it's 15, you'll go as low as 15, I forget, but generally you'll need a minimum of 20% with Beeline. Um, and then on top of that, there are closing costs and things like that. So you just want to make sure that you have um, all your ducks in a row financially uh, and uh, go from there. And then, you know, like Amanda said, do your due diligence and things like that. Cool, that makes sense. At what point do you think somebody should go and get the pre-approval from the lender? I would say to start shopping as soon as you can. Um, it's not going to hurt to start learning the process and get a feel for what it's going to be like. Once you start shopping for lenders and defining what you want in an investment property, you'll be able to, to pull the trigger a lot faster. Cool, that makes sense. And Michael, to your point, yeah, the uh, investment loans typically are about 20% down. And again, I am not a licensed uh, mortgage expert, but happy to put you in contact with the right person. But it will be uh, 20 percent and there are some 15 percent down programs um, depending on other things but a loan guide will be able to help with that much better than i can yeah i think just to piggyback off what amanda was saying uh always starting early is a good thing but i think also when it's door best specific a big big uh misconception is that you need pre-approval before reserving a home whereas you can reserve a home you know, make sure someone else doesn't pick it up before you. And then we'll give you the time to get financing afterward. Um, but we can have those discussions like when you're in the customer flow, but I always like to point that out as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do want to take a couple of minutes to talk about that uh, closer to the end, um, about the flow and some of the benefits of working with Beeline and DoorVest, because uh, I know we have a, a couple of things we can offer uh, to our audience. Um, I want to keep going down these questions. This is an interesting one. Um, so it's a multi-part question. So I'm going to pitch it in three different parts. So first one is condos or single family rentals. And I'm not sure if they're asking your preference or, you know, what your experience has been seeing what other people do. So I'll let you answer it either way. Yeah, I would say that condos come with maybe a heftier HOA um, versus a single family rental. Uh, and I want, I would love for Michael to share his view too, because he does own uh, a condo. Yeah, I think DoorVest first and foremost specializes in single family homes. I think what's great about them is historically they've seen great appreciation. Um, so we kind of focus on that as our bread and butter, but I think sometimes condos do have their time and place. Um, I own my primary residence as a condo and um, I think it will make a great investment, you know, when we move out of here at some point. So um, somewhat biased saying you, you should uh, invest in single families with us, but, you know, totally understand the other way. Um, if you can find a solid condo, there might be a little bit less maintenance over time, right? Smaller place, less headaches, things like that. But I think in terms of appreciation, I think single families are going to be your best bet. I would, I'll give my opinion too. I love single families. Um, I would live in a condo just because it's a lot easier than maintaining a single family, but I don't think I would have it as an investment property uh, to rent it out just on cash flow as well. Um, which kind of brings us to the next part of the question. Appreciation in equity or rental cash flow? What's your target? This is a question we get so frequently. Um, I would say that you're going to see the bulk of your profits in appreciation profit equity accumulation, whereas cash flow is is definitely a perk. Um, but I would say when you're taking a hands off passive approach and, and that's what you're seeking in an investment, you should be focused on appreciation and equity accumulation uh, with cash flow being a perk. What do you think, Michael? I agree. I always like to think of cash flow as icing of the cake. Um, but you know, we can focus on some uh, cash flow strategies as well, if that's what you're interested in. 
but what attracted me the most to investing in real estate was return on down payment. So if you're putting down 20%, but you're appreciating on the sale or purchase price of the home, um, you're able to ultimately get a nice return on down payment once you sell the home. Um, so that's kind of what attracted me the most is just being able to utilize that leverage. Yeah, for sure. The leverage part is what made real estate really attractive to me in the beginning, you know, taking a relatively small amount of money and being able to make that much more when you sell versus, you know, something like stocks where you have to wait a long time for that to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we already answered the third part of this question which, which is, well, maybe we didn't answer it directly, but it is, should one avoid HOA based homes? I think that's really more of a, of a personal preference than an I agree. Preference. It's definitely, a, it's definitely a preference. I think that some say that they like a second, a second set of eyes on their homes and then some like to avoid it. Yeah. And I'd just like to add the ones on Dorvis platform that do have an HOA it's usually pretty cheap, so um, it's not going to make a major difference in terms of cash flow. And then again, back to that deduction point, like ultimately it will be a tax deduction for you as well. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not a fan of HOAs. I live in Florida and HOAs here are horrible, so I would never recommend to anyone buy an HOA home. But again, that's my, <laughs> that's my opinion and my preference, not uh, official advice. Uh, the next question is actually specific to Florida. Um, I know it's not a place where you're currently doing business. So if you're not comfortable taking that question, we can skip it. Um, I'm okay with that, but I think we can skip I'm, it. I'm actually from Florida. So I think I, I think I can handle a question. Cool. All right. We'll try it. It says, what are the cons you may know of for investing in Florida for a rental property? And what are the best places to do a rental property? I'm going to assume the second part of the question is specific to Florida as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think one of the biggest cons right off like the top of my head is the weather in Florida. Uh, we're notoriously known for having hurricanes and rain and storms. And I'm sure Jonathan, you're, you're very familiar with that. We have bipolar weather. Um, I would say that that's the biggest con. I think there's also a lot of pros. I've been seeing a lot of, um, I would just say trending news of people buying investment properties in uh, Southern Florida in particular, uh, like South Beach, Miami area, and even, I mean, all the way up to the North coast of Jacksonville of where I'm from, uh, the homes, the home prices are not very expensive, but we're seeing a lot of population growth in Florida. Uh, so I think there's, there's a lot of different trending areas. It's just about finding the areas that are still decently priced because a lot of home prices have skyrocketed in in southern florida especially um and and getting in while you can yeah i'll pick it back off of that i'm in south florida and it's crazy what property prices are doing here um even with the price correction that we've had this past month we're still up somehow um and a lot of cash buyers so if you're looking at south florida you need a lot of cash on hand um or a very, very, very good broker that can get you an off-market deal. And we did interview a very good broker in South Florida a couple of weeks ago. So look out for that recording if you're looking to invest in Florida. We do have a contact for you. Um, cool. This one's another question. It's a comment saying some HOAs will not allow you to rent out your property. That's another good point. The HOA can tell you that, sorry, you can't rent anymore. Or worse, you can rent, but not to these people because we don't approve them. It's true. We do that kind of vetting on top of the hand. And I think usually it is stricter for condos. Um, but for context, in my door vest home, um, the HOA was $300 the entire year, which I think you might see that sometimes just for one month in Florida. Right, Jonathan? <laughs> yeah. For, I mean, that's normal even for like a small apartment that has an HOA here. So it gets pretty wild, especially if they're older. They have all that deferred maintenance. Um, I would also add probably like newer construction, the HOA fees are going to tend to be lower because they don't have the deferred maintenance they haven't done and that they have to pay for. So that's one thing to look at um, mm -hmm. well, if you're looking at HOAs. Uh, we are coming up to the end of our time together and I'm not seeing any questions. So one last call for questions. 
But while we do that, um, I do want to uh, give you both a quick opportunity. Just, I guess, you know, in 30 seconds to a minute, can you just do a quick rundown of exactly, I know we've been talking about Dorvest, but can you give like the one minute pitch of Dorvest, what you offer? And then let's talk a little bit about the partnership and then I'll go into the, um, actually, let me take this down. I'll show that at the end. And then we'll talk about what we can offer as, a, as partners to our audience. Yeah, Michael, you want to go ahead? Sure. Um, I think just what I was saying throughout this whole call, right? We're seamless end to end process. We're going to do all the heavy lifting for you. We're going to offer guarantees that you're just really not going to find anywhere else. Or if you try to um, invest in the property yourself, um, we'll buy the home, we'll renovate it for you. Once renovations are complete, we'll sell the home, but we'll still have a vested interest in your success. But as your property manager, all in all, if the renovations are already home, or uh, sorry, if the renovations are already complete on a home, you can be in a homeowner with us in as little as 35 days. Um, so it's a really easy process. Where Beeline fits into that is um, presently the one thing, or actually two things we don't do in house would be lending and insurance. So Beeline has been a great lending partner for us, offering customers incredibly low rates. Um, and they also have an online process. And then we also do have insurance partners. So you don't have to worry about that one either. Yeah, and just to add to that, I, th I think DoorVest is really lowering the barriers to entry for real estate by allowing investors to remotely invest in areas that maybe have lower purchase prices uh, where they can afford, especially with rising interest rates. Um, so being able to provide that end-to-end -end tech forward solution is uh, is DoorVest being able to advance financial security for all. And that's, that's essentially our mission at DoorVest. And that's one thing I love about DoorVest, the way you frame your mission, and what you're trying to do, and really the way you're helping people get there. Um, so with that in mind, I know there's usually a deposit that people pay before they can really start looking at properties and starting to get details. And I'm going to put this up now. Um, if you go to beeline.doorvest.com, you can actually waive that deposit. Um, that's through the partnership that DoorVest and Beeline have established. So you know, if you're here today, you're able to take advantage of this. And then also, if there are any questions that you had that you didn't want to put here in the chat, or if somehow we skip your question, I don't think we did, but if we did, I do apologize. Uh, please send them to, well, go to this link, uh, go to makeabeeline.com slash question, and you'll be able to submit your question there. You can also use that to send any details about any deals that you're working on, and we can get you in contact with a loan guide. We can go from there. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending. And uh, we'll see you in the following session, which will be all about managing your rental properties. Thank you, Amanda, and thank you, Michael. We'll Thanks, everyone. Thanks.